Welcome back to Venue 7 in the Newtown Theatre. Uh, this is uh, Edinburgh Festival Live, and uh, we are lucky enough to be joined by Ruri Murphy. So thank you very much. Murray, sorry. Oh, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. Oh, thank worries. you. How you doing? I'm very well, how are you? Yeah, very well, very well. How's your festival going? It's, yeah, I'm having a great start. I've, um, I've already had a couple of cracking reviews, so uh, that's really, really, that's what you need, you know, get off so, the right foot. Tell us, tell us about your show. Um, my new play is called The Club. It's a two-hander, and it's set in London in the 90s, in a nightclub. Um, hence, surprise, surprise, The Club. Uh, the strap line is one night, two dickheads, and that basically kind of sums it up. It's about these two, it's based on a true club which was called the TARDIS Studios, which was on Terminal Street in London, uh, and it was just, it was a door and a brick wall. Uh, it was behind Farringdon Station, and you'd go inside and it was vast, like the TARDIS, and it was ran by these two lunatics um, called George and Nick, and I actually worked there when I first arrived in London in the late 90s, and I was a barman. So I got to see it firsthand, and they'd have all these kind of, uh, they'd have a lot of celebrities in, they'd have a lot of, um, there was kind of underworld figures would come in. Uh, they had a swearing parrot called Jesus that would fly around uh, and get drunk. Uh, and it was a real kind of mashup. It's a great job. Yeah, yeah, well for me it was, um, you know, uh, for your first stop in London, it was a real kind of um, shock to the system. But I, yeah, I just, I thought it was such rich material that I have made a, a play out of it. So was that just dating for a while? Was it something that was floating about in the back of your mind, this idea of using that place? Well, with, with, with my writing, I, I, I'm actually using this as a, a springboard for a sitcom for TV. Um, and I did have this as a sitcom idea for quite some time. And I've been fortunate in that I've had more people, but I've uh, had producers come and see my show um, over the last couple of years. And so uh, I've pitched this idea and, and people really like it. But I also, at the same time, I wanted to make something that was tangible, that people could see. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've made this show and uh, yeah, no, you know, it was always bubbling away at the back there of my, somewhere in the back of that, uh, my so head. So what, what takes, uh, you're a local boy, aren't you? You're yes, an Edinburgh. Yeah. Whereabouts so, in Edinburgh? Um, I'm originally from Stockbridge. Okay, so Just very down nice. the hill. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah um, I went to Stockbridge Primary in Broughton High School. I'm a porty boy. Ah, porty. The beach. Wow. <laughs> I used to go training down there when I was younger. So. That's, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. So what takes you down to London? What brings you onto the path of writing? What, you know, what, how did that happen? Um, well, I went to... I went to drama school, uh, the Oxford School of Drama, and I was fortunate enough, I, I got taken on by an agent in London, and then I was doing acting, and at the same time, I'd always had been part of the Traverse Theatre Young Writers Group, and then the Royal Court Young Writers Group. And so I, yeah, I was, I was always writing at the same time, and I just, I suppose things, you know, I wasn't, um, I started off in London, I was doing really well, I was working with people like Daniel Craig and uh, Ray Winston, but then the work just started to, I would say it, it wasn't coming as fast, you know, so, um, I, and I had all these ideas, so I started putting together my own shows, and I did my first festival um, with my first show, Big Sean, Mikey and Me, which was about myself and my imaginary friend, Sean Connery. Uh, it was a dark comedy set in Edinburgh, the, the Edinburgh that I grew up in, around the football casual scene. And um, it did really well. And so I, um, yeah, I've just progressed from there, so. I think a lot of Edinburghers have an imaginary friend of Sean Connery. Well, it's not a bad imaginary friend It's our party trick have. anywhere else in the world as well, is that we do a mean Sean Connery impression. Well, the, the whole thing about my show was that, that my Connery impression was awful, so uh, <laughs> that was part of the humour, so I hope Sean maybe will wipe me off with that. So where's it on? Where can people catch this? Uh, the play is on, uh, my play The Club is on at the Gilded Balloon at five o'clock every day. Fabulous. And so, you, I mean, the festival obviously, it's... Uh, it's a strange time of year, and if you're from here originally, how does it feel coming back and doing the festival, being one of the people that no doubt you raised an eyebrow to in your time before? Yeah, no, it's, 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 because when you grow up in Edinburgh, you just take it for granted, you know? When you're young, it's like, ah, oh, it's all the weirdos and those guys uptown. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, but 
I, I mean, I remember going to see Jack D's first ever show and just thinking that guy's, you know, amazing. And so it was. I suppose it's it is a great, it's a great, uh, it's great inspiration um, to have on your doorstep. Um, and then as you get older, you know, you start drinking and all that stuff, and the drinking hours are relaxed. You're like, this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then coming back as a performer, I, you know, I really realise how great a, a showroom it is, you know, for for your work and uh, and the opportunities that can come from it. It's been so great for me, you know. Um, I've got BBC producers coming this time, so I'm really excited about what what could potentially happen. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, David. Uh, once, one time again, where's, where can we catch it all? Um, my show, The Club, is on at the Gilded Balloon, and it's on at five o'clock every day. One night, Perfect. two decades. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And now, just because the day couldn't get any better, we have Suze with the news to give us all the good news she can. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Suze with the news, news with Suze. Now, unfortunately, um, my cat died this morning on my way into work. So um, that was my latest news, uh, which wasn't great. And I feel like there's so much sadness in the world, you know, um, in my own personal life at the moment um, with the cat. Um, but I don't want to sort of, you know, bore you all with the details of that. Um, so I thought I would just try and cheer us all up with some happy news. Um, today. Thanks for the sympathy, by the way, everyone, because I told you my cat died and there was just silence for about a minute, it felt. Um, usually people say, I'm sorry to hear about your cat, um, but nothing, nothing, um, no sympathy, not from anyone. So, um, yes, I'm definitely in the right job, telling you all about the news. So I'm going to get on with the news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell happy stories from the news because, let's face it, the world is grim. So, I found a great story about a birthday cake. So I'm going to tell a story about a birthday cake, everyone, because everyone loves their birthday, right? Birthday cake blaze kills 13. <laughs> it's the first one I've read. At least 13 people were killed after fire swept through a basement bar during a birthday party yesterday. I just want to keep going. I want to, I want to keep reading. It is believed candles on a cake started the blaze in the northern French city of Rouen. Rouen. <laughs> I'll try and find another happy story, eh? Because that one's not working. Um, a wedding. There's a wedding couple. There was... Um, People got married and, uh, oh, well, there was a problem on their wedding day, everyone, because they were supposed to get taken to the church in the Rolls Royce and the company kind of um, folded and they had to go in a Ford car. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I just don't think I'm in the right job. I also saw a video, everyone, on um, Twitter today that really disturbed me because, you know, it's the Rio Olympics at the moment, and uh, a guy broke his leg. I don't know if you've seen it. And he, uh, he was a gymnast, and he was trying to get up to, you know, like the horse, you know, the horse that you jump over, and he, he, he came off and he, his leg was broke. So that's him out. He's done. <laughs> uh, got a story about an X Factor winner from 2013. Who's gone deaf? Her left ear. <laughs> um, singer from Take That, Howard Donald, is out to win his dream DJ gig for a Scottish outfit with a trial shot in Ibiza. And that's the, you know, the one that no one knows from Take That. So, for God's sake. Um, we've got the sport today. Um, oh, uh, there's a noose on the sport pages. <laughs> Why don't we do the crossword, eh? It's always a bit of fun in the crossword. One across. A word for shiver with horror. <laughs> Would that be shudder? Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's looking like shudder. 
So that's that. I think that's enough for me from the news today. I don't know about you, but get back and bury my cat. Bye, everyone. <laughs>